Hello everyone and welcome uh, to another class of Physiology for Engineers with Professor Gonzalez Fernandez at Lehigh University. So today we are going to look at an overview of the uh, sensory system. So we are going to look today at the process that happens since our body feels a change in our exterior environment or our internal environment and it arrives to our central nervous system in the brain in order to process that stimuli and create a voluntary or an involuntary response. So in order to understand how the sensory system works, we are going to look at the process at the different stages since we get that stimuli until uh, our uh, brain responds to the stimuli. So the first uh, part of this process or the first stage of the process is called the sensory transduction. So the most important element of the sensory transduction is going to be the receptor. And the receptor can be a receptor cell that is going to transmit that stimuli into a neuron, or it can be a neuron itself. So in this process of the sensory transduction, we have a stimuli. And this stimuli is going to activate a receptor that again can be a, a cell by itself that is then it's going to activate another neuron or it can be the regular neuron. And this stimuli is going to change here the permeability of the ionic changes so we can have a change in the membrane potential. So if you remember the previous lectures, in order to have, in order for the neural stimuli uh, to be transmitted uh, until our brain, we need to generate first a greater potential and then an action potential. So uh, this stimuli, what it's going to do, is going to uh, make this uh, first greater potential. So uh, the membrane potential can go from resting potential of one of 70 to here. So the greater potential, which is also called, called the receptor potential or the sensory potential, can uh, go up until the minus 50 millivolts that is needed uh, for that threshold in order to start the action potential, okay? So uh, we have different types of uh, receptors. Uh, they can be divided into different categories and different divisions. Uh, so I'm going to make two different divisions. Uh, so we can uh, look at the types of uh, receptors depending if they are inside or outside of our body. So we have here, depending on where, So if they are inside of our body, uh, we are going to uh, call them interoceptors. So these interoceptors are going to feel the different changes in the inside of our, of our body. So they are going to feel different changes in metabolites or, for example, uh, oxygen concentrations, the pH, uh, different chemicals in our body. Then if the receptors are going to feel the changes in the outside of our body, they are called exteroceptors. So these are receptors that are going to feel the changes in mechanical tension, so the mechanoreceptors that we are going to look a bit more in depth in a sec, and also uh, changes in temperature, uh, cold, uh, warm, uh, also pain. And finally, we have another type of receptor, uh, which is kind of an intermediate between the inside and the outside of our body, which is the proprioceptor. Proprioceptor. So the proprioceptors are in charge of the balance and the position of, of our body. So this is the same classification, which is depending on where they are located, if they are inside or outside of our body. And we can have another classification that depends in these, if these uh, receptors of the type of stimuli that these receptors get. So according uh, to the different type of stimuli that these receptors get, uh, we have, first of all, chemo receptors. We also have thermo. There are, uh, so the chemo receptors are going to be sensitive to different chemicals. The thermoreceptors sensitive to temperature. 
We have also uh, the photoreceptors that are sensitive to light, for example, in the vision, right? And then uh, we also have the mechanoreceptors. And finally here, we are also going to have the nociceptors that are the ones responsible of sensing pain. So in order to explain a bit what happens in all of these uh, different receptors, so in the chemoreceptors, uh, the receptor here, we have the receptor, that again can be a cell or it can be a neuron. Uh, so we have a chemical, and this chemical is going to bind to a specific uh, ion channel, and this ion channel is going to then deactivate it so we can have this greater potential. In the thermal receptors uh, here, we have the same, so we have uh, our receptor here. And uh, then in the receptor, we have ionic channels that are going to change the permeability depending on the temperature. So if the temperature increases, we, are, we have a specific channels that are going to be activated. And if the temperature decreases, we are all going to have other channels that are more sensitive to cold that are going to be only activated when the temperature goes down. Uh, the photoreceptors, so we only have two types of photoreceptors. We have the cones and the rods. So uh, the rods uh, will be uh, something like these, and they are in the eyes. And the cones, there's more or less like these. So these are going to be activated uh, due to photons, to light. So we are going to look at this a bit more in depth when we look at the, at the vision. And finally, we have the mechanoreceptors, and the mechanoreceptors are going to activate it by a difference in the stretch of the uh, receptor membrane. So uh, someone touches us or hit us, and that's going to create a difference, so that's going to stretch uh, the receptor membrane, right? So that change in the stress uh, is going to activate uh, an ion channel and that's going to originate this uh, sensory transduction or uh, this uh, sensory potential, uh, the greater potential that is going to originate then the action potential. Uh, the nociceptors uh, are the receptors of pain, but they are a combination of chemoreceptors, chemoreceptors, and mechanoreceptors, right? So for example, someone hit us really hard, that's uh, activation of a mechanoreceptor, but that's also going to produce a stain or we put our uh, hands uh, under running cold water or under running hot water, and that's also going to cause some pain. Okay, so we finished with the sensory transduction of the different types of receptors. Uh, so then the uh, second step is going to be the generation of the action potential. Right, so if you remember from uh, the previous uh, lecture, first we have the greater potential here, which is the receptor potential. So the greater potential is going to add to each other until we arrive at this threshold here, or minus 50. And then once we arrive to that threshold, we are going to have the action potential. So we are going to have this change of intensity, uh, this uh, membrane depolarization until plus 30 millivolts. Again, okay. this time. So according to the different types of action potential, uh, we also have different uh, receptors. Uh, so we have tonic receptors. So the tonic receptors are constantly active. Uh, and uh, what is going to change is the frequency of the action potential. So the tonic receptors they are uh, making or generating action potentials constantly. And then when they receive a stimuli, we have an increase in the frequency of the action potentials. So let's say that we have here an action potential, action potential, and then we have the stimuli here, and then we have a change in the frequency of these action potentials until the stimuli goes down and we have again back to the normal uh, frequency of the action potential. But we also have another type of receptor depending on uh, the action potential, which is called the passive receptor. So these passive receptors, they are only activated, they only generate this action potential uh, when uh, we receive the stimuli. 
so here we receive the stimuli here, membrane depolarization, repolarization uh, when the stimuli goes down. Okay. So uh, this actual potential is really important to conduce the um, uh, stimuli from uh, the receptor and uh, the uh, terminal, the receptive terminal of the neuron or the receptor cell into uh, our central nervous system.